Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, today we're going to be doing part two. My previous video, I forgot to mention it was part one, but this one I did remember. Part two of percentages of chance that each team makes the playoffs. And we did this on my live stream. You can be part of that if you hit the subscribe button. And uh, you can put in your percentages for when each team will make the playoffs or much of the other frolic that we do, like trade proposals and, and grading each team's coaches and all that kind of stuff like that. And when the season comes up and the season's coming, can't wait. Yay. Can't wait for the season to get started. We do... Uh, predictions for each games and all that kind of stuff. It's fun. It's all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. If you like the all, all four of the major sports and uh, teams within those four major sports, you'll like it. Go check it out. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Okay, let's get, we're going to start with Nashville. We did Anaheim to Montreal. Now we're going to go into Nashville and uh, their percentage of making the playoffs. Whoops. That's what I'm trying to do right there. Okay. Uh, well, not a very high score. Uh, made the playoffs last year. I am one of the few people, it seems, that is a Heinz fan. I thought he was doing fine in New Jersey. Uh, had, I don't know what happened there. Usually when when coaches get fired like that, they're having issues with some big members of the team or something of that nature. Um, but he went over to Nashville and took a team that probably shouldn't have made the playoffs to the playoffs. And so that'll kind of give you a little bit of a pre um, hint as to what my mark was. The overall for the stream mark was for the uh, 18%. I personally had 13%. If Hines gets this team into a, a playoff spot in this division, let's remember the division. Holy. Uh, this division has... Chicago, Colorado, Dallas, Minnesota, St. Louis, and Winnipeg. That is going to be pretty tough for a team of Nashville stature to uh, to make the playoffs. They, this lineup should not be making the playoffs. Ryan Johansson is not a number one center. Matthew Shane. Do, what's Matthew Shane going to be this year? Michael Granlin is barely a second line center. They are in tough here they have a great goaltender in sorrows that is saving their bacon a lot of games and even though they made the mis uh, made the trade for from uh, for alice for myers which i get also nashville has been really good at uh developing defensemen so myers probably will get a lot better in nashville system I still think their defense looks not bad. Dante Favreau should take a step up this year, and you still got the Ro um, Roman Josie, who already won a Norris and could win another one. And Alexander Carrier is a really good, another good example of Nashville bringing up some solid defensemen. Their their de development system is absolutely fantastic. Um, but that all being said, I just don't see enough offense here. Um, Cody Glass is a question mark uh, coming over from Vegas. He could, just couldn't seem to find his way there in Vegas, and now he's going to have to try to find it in Nashville. And they seem Nashville seems to be trying to do this a lot. Mike Cunning um, put up a pretty mass season, and uh, I don't know if he can improve. There's way too many question marks in this lineup to give a high grade to. So, again, 18% from the community to make the playoffs. Tell me what you feel, Nashville Predators fans, or otherwise, anybody. 
what do you think that they Nashville Predators were going to, uh, as a percentage to make the playoffs would be? Next, New Jersey Devils. And um, this team could surprise, to say the least. Uh, the the votes, the percentages given were kind of all over the place. We did have one 100% chance of making the playoffs. Uh, I believe that was from Lauren Darkin. I could be wrong. No, it wasn't. Uh, anyways, uh, and we had one 9% to make the playoffs. So tells you how it was all over the place. Um, I personally gave New Jersey a 44% chance to make the playoffs, mainly because it's just a really tough division. Islanders, Rangers, um, Washington Capitals. Uh, they are going to beat Philadelphia Flyers, of course. All of, They're going to be tough. This is going to be a tough division to make the playoffs in. They're a very young team. However, they progressed so well last year. I could see Kalkin taking a step up. This they're in these players are in the 24 age. 24 years old is a you are quite often the age that you see big things from players that are building in the NHL and growing up in the NHL. So, and they have a lot of them here. Pavel Zaka had a career year last year at the age of 24 years old. Um Brat, all of these guys are in the those, that sweet spot. So I could see a big surprising year. And not to mention, of course, New Jersey picking up Dougie Hamilton, the wonderful move picking up Ryan Graves. Um, P- P.K. Subban hasn't been as bad as people have made him out to be. Yeah, he's not a $9 million player, but he's not terrible. Um, and uh, I really like the pickup of Ziegenthaler. Fitzgerald has done a great job with this lineup, but mostly, and I even think my score could be low here, my percentage could be low here because I love the pickup of Bernier. I think Jonathan Bernier was fantastic in Detroit the last two years. This is a better defense than what he had in Detroit. Pretty much any defense is. Um, I could see him absolutely crushing it. And, of course, Mackenzie Blackwood is already absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, 46% from me, and the overall was 46%. 46% chance to make the playoffs. What do you guys in New Jersey think or anybody else listening? Put it in the comment section. Uh, or And don't forget to come on my live stream and you can be part of making these percentages. So much frolic, you'll enjoy it. Uh, New York Islanders, of course, they're going to get a high score. Honestly, I thought it would be a little bit higher. And there is, I had 82%, which isn't too bad. My only real question about the Islanders lineup is... Um, Depth, not on the team, it's not bad, but players to take over if for injuries. Guys like Kiefer Bellows haven't panned out. Austin Chernick has never been able to establish, establish himself. Um, there is not, Otto Koibula keeps on giving it a shot over and over again, but not great depth to be able to pick somebody out of the, uh, out of the minors and play. And uh, that's what I'm mostly concerned about here. Um, if it were to fall apart, it would be because of a lot of injuries. Now you have Barry Trott's system who seems to be able to win with just about anybody. Um, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. A lot of coaches that were coaching this team would not get this team into the playoffs. But with when you've got uh, a Barry Trott's system Oliver Wallstrom probably set I think possibly for a career year this year and uh, some of the fine moves of bringing Palmieri back uh, bringing a lot of depth on the actual roster it's hard to believe this team wouldn't make the playoffs I had them at 82 but the community had it at 78 not to mention the distinct possibility that Elia Sorokin could turn in could crush it this year uh, at 26 years old, I think he's ready to take over the number one spot. In the KHL, he was an absolute 
beast, and he looks like he's heading that direction in the NHL. So highly unlikely to me that the New York Islanders miss the playoffs for sure. New York Rangers. Um, I love this team as far as, again, the players on the roster. I like the way it's constructed. I, for one, um, do believe that getting Barkley Goudreau, even though, okay, you look at the price, whatever. I'm just looking at what he, they, he, they, this, these guys do for the roster here. Barkley Goudreau, you win cups with guys like this. As simple as that. Tampa Bay already showed it. I've had some arguments with Rangers fans about paying this much for a guy like Barkley Goudreau. Let's remember that Tampa Bay gave up a first in a fairly deep draft for Barkley Goudreau in the first place. The guy wins cups. He's got an attitude like that. And he puts up some pretty decent points for a guy who's playing in the bottom six, 20 points in 55 games. Um, Buchnevich, the trade of Buchnevich, I don't know what's going on, but you have to admit, Buchnevich pissed off every coach he had. And why, I don't know. But he wasn't working out there even though his offense is good. Sometimes offense isn't everything either. Samuel Blay is, you're going to love him. You're going to love every time this guy goes on the ice, the way he crushes it out there and does his job. Um, I think you're going to, I I think he's going to be good for this team. Um, I like the moves that they made. And we gave 62% as a community. And I gave 70% for the Rangers to make the playoffs this year in a very tough division. I just love them. Uh, then, of course, you have on defense, uh, you got, first of all, Alex Lafreniere. Is he going to crush it this year? I think so. Uh, Capo Caco going to come out as a 20. People, oh, Capo Caco is a bust, I've heard. Are you kidding me? He had 17 points in 48 games as a 20 year old. That is not. That is not an easy task. It's not something that happens all the time. He's going to be fine and probably better this year. No doubt about it. Um, this roster could just absolutely crush it. And then, of course, um, well, frick, his name just escaped me. Their new coach. I hate that. Try doing things. These things I do totally on the fly. So when I do them on the fly, I quite often forget things. And I just forgot his name as a coach. It should come to me. Maybe not. Oh, Galat. Sorry. Finally. Came into my head. Okay, and defense, Lindgren and Fox. Oh, what a beautiful duo. What a beautiful duo, my gosh. One of the best duos in the league already at 23 years old. Keandre Miller, absolutely love, love, love. Uh, Truba, yeah, he's not an $8 million defenseman, I get, of course, I, but he does his job. He's still a good guy for, in the fourth role. Maybe he's a little overpaid, but so what? A lot of guys would still pay $8 million for Truba right now. I tell you right now, they would. Uh, he, he just brings that type of uh, physicality that every team loves. Uh, Patrick Nemeth and Lundqvist, whatever. And then is 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 okay. I I honestly Nils Lundqvist, I haven't been able to watch him. Most of it has been in Sweden. I've heard good thing, really good things about him though. So he's probably going to pan out pretty well. New York Rangers have really done well at bringing up players. So I'm not going to uh, really question that. Uh, Igor Shosturkin, unbelievable, fantastic goaltender. I that's what, I think they really have a good shot this year. The only problem I may have is if injuries come up, they don't really have a lot of guys that can step in for a long term. Greg McCaig is good for a couple games here and there, which is what he was brought in for. Morgan Barron is interesting. Uh, he put up, I believe, some really good numbers in AHL last year. Oh, no, sorry, only one. Oh, yeah, wait. Uh, yeah, 21 points in 21 games. I was right. Uh, that's pretty darn good for a late first pick um so that's interesting but besides that there's not overly too much to take over libor libor hijack just never got his offense going not a big fan of potato i don't think zachary jones is ready uh so 
in the near future, their defense looks absolutely fantastic, but maybe not much to step in the lineup right now. Now they can add in, uh, they can add, of course, on waivers and uh, maybe, you know, pick up or PTO or something like that to get that. But I like the team overall. Next, Ottawa Senators. Uh, the Ottawa Senators' second half last year was pretty fantastic. And they're still working on a contract for Brady Kachuk. Let me say this right off the top. What are you doing? Like, are you haggling over dollars and cents with freaking Brady Kachuk? You're you're insane. You're insane. This is a guy that's from the United States. His his family is from the his mom is from the Winnipeg area. I don't think he'll mind being in Canada all that much, but I wouldn't want to play around with it when you're talking about Brady Kachuk. There's some guys you haggle with. Brady Kachuk ain't one. There's talk that his brother Matthew wants to go to. Uh, uh, St. Louis, it's it's basically a rumor, but it did come from a really good source. I got serious radio uh, over, um, I forgot his name, but uh, not O'Reilly. You know who he is from serious radio. Not a, not a guy that, you know, you don't really hear like outright. I got a little bird tell me on serious radio too much. So I wouldn't be screwing around, man. Give him the nine million for eight years and get it over with. Okay, I got that off my chest. But uh, this lineup in general, it needs depth. But the top six is pretty solid. I would be putting Shane Pinto up here. From what I saw last year from Shane Pinto, he looks almost ready to take that second line center spot. Colin White, let's face it, he's not a second line center. In fact, I would even go as far as to say he's not a center at all. I'd rather have him down here on the wing. Uh, and maybe Chris Tierney up here. Maybe look for another center for the third line. But Drake Batherson, Norris Kachuk, beautiful, beautiful line. By the way, wonderful signing of Drake Batherson too. And then you got Tim Stutzla. Here we'd have Pinto and Brown. Green, very green, but exciting, very exciting team. And this team plays its bag off. Smith has got this team playing so, so hard. Uh, you're not going to outwork the Ottawa Senators. And that'll get you wins in the regular season, man, because there's a lot of teams that don't get it in the regular season. Or they take some time off, or they're thinking more towards the playoffs, where Ottawa is outplaying everybody every game. Love to watch them. Shabbat, Zaitsev, Brandstrom, and Zub. Serviceable. I love Zub. Zub had a fantastic year last year. What a great pickup by them. Eric Branson should be ready now, 22 years old, to give her a good go. And I like the getting Nick Holden, uh, especially for a guy that, you know, to don't off that didn't do anything, really. I thought that was a good move. Um, not bad. Here's the issue, though. And Ottawa, we gave you. Uh, 44% chance to make the playoffs, so 44% chance. Not too bad from the community. I think I was a little lower. I gave 41. I'm really I – I'm going to go with a team that outworks the opposition a lot, especially if you've got some – can score some goals. But they need Matt Murray, and I don't know why they have Anton Forsberg here. It's going to be Philip Gustafson to step up and uh, play – uh, for sure. It's got to be Philip Gustafson. Um, and I think Gustafson's going to be the guy. Uh, he has been absolutely fantastic. I'm not too concerned about that. Matt Murray, I am concerned about, though. Tell me what you guys think, Ottawa Senators fans. What would you give your chances of making the playoffs this year? Again, a little bit. Uh, you got Jacob Bernard Docker that can come up and play. Um, Sherwood Cole, nice pickup. He can play in a pinch. Um, Andrew Agazino can play in a pinch. Like um, there isn't some, there's some pretty good depth down here in the minors to be able to come up and play uh, with some injuries. So I don't mind their depth even as far as depth that can come up and play. A uh, little bit iffy about the bottom nine, but not too bad. Nicholas Paul played 
has been playing really, really well. He took his opportunity and ran with it, and I liked him a lot. Austin Watson, coming back from his issues, has looked really good. Um, so this is going to be a big year for uh, Alex uh, Formington, and apparently Logan Brown won't be here. Uh, he's going to be traded or going to Sweden. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. So, all right, next, Philadelphia Flyers. Um, the community, okay, the Philadelphia Flyers. The, it, all of the moves that happened with Atkinson coming in, I like the move. Um, they're gambling, they're banking on the fact that he things got a little stale in Columbus. And he can come back and crush it at 32 years in Philadelphia. 32 years old in Philadelphia. I think that's very possible. Um, it's uh, changes sometimes, like change of scenery. You hear that happen a lot. If there was ever a change of scenery trade, though, this one is it. Um, I think he, he. They're two different players too. Nothing against Voracek. But he's a passer, and they had way too many passers on this team. And Cam Atkinson is a first-shot player, so it works out well that way. Need step-ups from Travis Konechny. Big time. Got to work your bag off, dude. That's what I heard from A.V. Uh, resounding in a lot of the young players that are on this team. Joel Farabee's going to have a great year. Said it right now. He's going to have a great year. Um, but all of this isn't going to matter if this doesn't happen down here. Carter Hart and Martin Jones. Now, people say, well, you know, Carter Hart wasn't the problem. It was the defense in front of him. That's not true. Both were not good. Defense was not good. Carter Hart was not good. Simple as that. I can You can see a guy like Bernier in Detroit where the defense was bad. Uh, and he played, you can tell, he was fantastic. Defense was bad. He played well. Defense was bad in Philadelphia. Carter Hart did not play well. So it was both, and he's got to step it up this year. If he does it, it doesn't matter about the fact that they got Ryan Ellis, which I thought was a great move. I mean, Ryan Ellis is never going to be what he once was before the injury, but he's still a very serviceable, solid, top pair defenseman, I believe. And we're going to see that in Philadelphia as he has a – the uh, privilege to play with the wonderful Ivan Provorov, who's going to now get an opportunity to blossom into what we all know in Philadelphia he already is. Uh, Travis Sanheim, Rasmus Ristolainen, ah, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. He really is, a, there's a lot of work to be done for a 26-year-old here. He's pretty raw, pretty raw. Um, but we got... We gave them a 63%. I gave them a 60%. A lot of that has to do with a, a very difficult um, task they have to try to win in that division, trying to beat the Islanders, the Penguins, Washington Capitals, New York Rangers. All of these teams are very, very strong. Uh, let me bring it up here just to refresh my own memory. Carolina, can't forget Carolina, you know, it, it, that is going to be one heck of a tough division to, it's going to come right down to the wire anyways. So giving them a 60% is actually fairly high for that division as far as I'm concerned. Okay, next, we just talked about the, mentioned the Pittsburgh Penguins, we'll talk about them now. Uh, there, we were all over the board here too, and I'm actually going to go a little lower than I did before when we did this in the live stream yesterday, because it was before I found out that Crosby's going to be out for probably three weeks in the beginning of the season, and Evgeny Malkin, of course, still having their injuries, won't be ready for the beginning of the season. So they're going to be rolling with Carter Hart and Teddy Bluger as their top two centers. Do you think Brian Rust and Gunsell are going to be as good with Carter Hart as their center? I don't think so. Uh, or Teddy Bluger with Zucker and Kapanen. It could be rough to start out the season for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and it could be even rough no matter what if this doesn't happen here. Tristan Jerry, Casey DeSmith is serviceable, but if Tristan Jerry doesn't 
pick it up, especially from the where he was in the playoffs. This could be an absolute disaster of a season for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, we had in the stream, in my live stream, we had 180%. Somebody gave him an 80% chance to make the playoffs. I do believe that was Weichel. Uh, he really, he's not a Pittsburgh Penguins fan either. He just really thinks that, uh, you know, and it's Pittsburgh. It doesn't seem to matter what happens. They tend to just make the playoffs. So that's there's that. Sullivan, if they make the playoffs this year with these and there's the injuries like they were, Sullivan's got to get his freaking rookie of the year or coach of the year, right? He's got to get one sooner or later. He's done an absolutely fantastic job with this team. The other, the good thing is, is they do have guys like Michael Chaput, who is a very serviceable center. He's not going to score much, but he is a good two way guy. Uh, brought in Dominic Simone back. Uh, Radim Zahorna filled in pretty good last year with injuries. Uh, so they have some guys to fill in the roster, not too bad. But we don't want any more injuries there in Pittsburgh because this gets pretty thin after that. And defensemen too. Taylor Fadoon, excellent, excellent uh, depth defenseman. He can play on most teams' bottom five, six, and not hurt at all. Mark Friedman and, of course, all, Pierre Oliver Joseph did very, very well replacing uh players last year when there was injuries. So we got 60% chance. Uh, the low and I, was me, actually. I have 40%. I don't think Pittsburgh's going to make the playoffs much year. Sorry, guys. But overall, as far as the community is concerned, 60% chance to make the playoffs. San Jose Sharks um, did not go well. Let me tell you that right now. I think in San Jose land, uh, they're also not going to be giving them very good marks to make the playoffs as well. Oh, here we are. Sorry about that. San Jose Sharks. Um, 6%. And uh, I actually had, I was a high. I said 11%. I have a feeling I'm putting 11% because my mind says 11%. You're not going to have a Vander Kane by the sounds of it. Uh, you know, there's a whole Thomas hurdle. Is he going to stay issue going on? But it's a very weak division that they're in. And I think there's a good possibility that the energy of Kane not being there could change this team an awful lot. This team could actually be way better without Kane. And last year, I, when I was watching them, they had games where they, there was a stint there where they were looking like a playoff team. So I don't think it's impossible, that's for sure. And I think my 11% might even be low. But the problem is Mark Edward Vlasic is just not getting better with age at all, to say the least. And, um, of course, Eric Carlson, he's overpaid, but I think with a better team and a better energy, he'll look a lot better than last year. Brant Burns, can he still bring it at 37 years old? It's a tough defense here for sure. But the big one for me, and the reason why I went so low, is to a question mark with Aiden Hill. He did play well. Nabokov is a fantastic goalie coach, and he may just end up getting the best out of Aiden Hill and crushing here. But James Reimer, I don't see anybody getting any more out of him than he's already shown in his career, and it hasn't been all that much, so... My thing is, that's my biggest thing for the San Jose Sharks. Not to mention, if injuries happen, there's honestly not too much in this lineup that's going to be able to take over and do very well. Their depth is poor. Simple as that. So, next, Seattle. Uh, we were all over the board here. There is a lot. What were we? 75%, 93%. There was a 93% chance. I do believe that was Lauren Darkin, one of our live stream guys that uh, he, we like of, of all the live stream guys, I do remember him. He's been with us for the longest, I think. <laughs> uh, he gave 93%. He's super bullish. By the way, these are very intelligent hockey people that are on the stream. Uh, they know the game very, very well. We talk about hockey all day, every day. So, um, but my... I had the lowest out of everybody. I had 
I just don't think this team's going to score enough. I'm sorry. Um, I do think it's possible that depth on this team will be able to accomplish. Uh, will be able to accomplish the playoffs. So the more I look at it, when you think about some, the division that they're in, it's possible. Again, I like to look at what happens if there's injuries and. Um, Carson Torinsky and Lyndon Cole, Chalowski, William Borgen, not bad. It's okay. I think the depth could hold them in right to close to the end, but they just barely make the playoffs, just barely miss the playoffs. Was that a Freudian slip? Um, if Philip Grubauer or gets gets injured, it's all up to Chris Drager. And that wasn't – he wasn't too bad last year, but in the playoffs he really – Floundered, and there's not much after that. So it's it's there's a lot of issues. Mike Mikel Wenberg's not a number one center. Cal Yarncroc, I think it should be Jared McCann. Um, is that second line might all play other play team second line, but their first line is pretty. Jaden Schwartz coming off injury has not been good for the last two years. It, it, it's going to be tough getting goals for this team. It's going to have to be by committee and they could do it. They could do it. Um, and the rest of the community thought they had a pretty good chance because the average was 46% coin flip almost for Seattle to make the playoffs. The St. Louis Blues. Um, again, all over the place. We had a 70%. We had a 25%. I gave them a 25% chance to make the playoffs. I, I know St. Louis fans are not going to be happy with me for saying that, but I don't like this defense, and I just I don't. I think Colton Pareko is just not the same since he, going through his injuries. Uh, Falk and Krug, to me, is not a top two that I like to see. It's not a uh, – Falk, it's too soft. And then Scandella is a little too slow. There's a lot of two-something on that defense. I'm just not impressed with it. Jordan Bennington, I like him, but I think he's going to struggle. In be- I, I think the team will struggle behind this defense, not necessarily Jordan Bennington. Is Jordan Bennington a guy that's going to steal games for you? I haven't really seen a guy in the playoffs one year at times, but on a consistent basis is not what I would call. Very good goaltender, great goaltender. Still remains to be seen. I haven't seen what I would call him. And if he gets injured and Billy Huso has to take the reins, uh, it's not looking too good. Pavel Biknevich, great for points, but like I mentioned with the Rangers Rangers uh, broadcast, um, or talking about the Rangers, he pissed off his coaches a lot. Um, so uh, overall, the offense, though, I, I, I kind I don't mind especially if Tarasenko sticks around. It looks like he will be, and he can be healthy and turn on some burners here and, uh, you know, cha- turn off his mind that he's still there and play a good brand of hockey. Um, Saad, O'Reilly, Tarasenko, Peron, Shen, Buknevich, Sanford, Sunquist, Thomas is actually a really good top nine. My whole reason is on the defense for myself. Uh, the average was 40%. And the fact, that it's extremely, it's an extremely difficult division for them to play in. So, to make it. If other divisions, I'd probably give them a shot. But you got Minnesota, Chicago is a million times better. Uh, Colorado, uh, it is a tough division. So, next, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, I'll make this short. <laughs> I, what was the lowest The lowest was 95%. The average was 95%. Two 100% and a 99%. I don't see this team not making the playoffs in any way whatsoever. Uh, They still got Tyler Radish to fill in for injuries. They still got Boris Kachuk. Kachuk, who should be ready to play. Um, uh, Frederick Clayson can play in a pinch. Andre Schuster they brought over. Uh, even if they do have injuries, you've got the best goaltender in the league, the best winger in the league, and the best defenseman in the league. Most teams that have that, 
make playoffs. Next, Toronto. Well, Leafs fans, uh, we had a 75% chance to make the playoffs here for you. Uh, and we had as low as 15%, which I think is a little bit crazy. I had 59% to make the playoffs. Um, and I, I'm a little unsure about that. It's just everything to me with this team, and tell me if you think differently, Maple Leafs fans out there, is contingent on their top two lines. To those top four, the offense that they're going to get from their top four. They, they're they going to outscore a lot of teams every night. Simple as that. Uh, or at least they're going to run up the score themselves. Whether they're going to be able to prevent it now is on the other hand. But last year, they were seventh in the division. And I, you know what? I did... Uh, I did a thing saying that uh, we were grading their defense. I gave them a poor grade. And I didn't realize that they actually were seventh in the league last year on defense. So I had to kind of I had to kind of eat my words a little bit. I put it on a Facebook uh, posting and somebody called me out on it. And they were absolutely right. And I still can't believe it. Hence the reason why um, Sheldon Keefe, you got to give Sheldon Keith props, man, because, but I think this year it's going to be more difficult. Peter Morazic is not a great goaltender. Um, if they have injuries at all to their defense, I, I'd like to see what happened when Jake Muzzin got hurt, where their defense stood, because he was like everything for this team. TJ Brody was, was really good. Now, I'm going to give Toronto props for picking out guys off the scrap heap, like Nick Ritchie. And uh, Michael Bunting. Michael Bunting played really well for Arizona last year when he played. Excellent move. Um, and even David Kemp. I'm not sure if he's a third line center. Really, he does play a he plays a pretty good two way game. He's not going to bring you much offense. I'd prefer him on the fourth line, but not bad for the money. I think they filled out this roster pretty darn good considering on offense. Um, uh, the biggest thing for me is Rasmus Sandin here. Rasmus Sandin, if he can freaking take it to the next level this year at 21 years old, and I think he can. I think he's going to be a very good defenseman. Toronto's not in that bad of a spot, I believe. That is really a big one, though. Rasmus Sandin making it. As far as depth is concerned, you don't want injuries happening to this team. I'm not. Is 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 Nicholas Robertson ready? Will he ever be ready? Um, I think he will be a good player. Is he ready at 19 years old? I have my doubts. Um, Adam Brooks and Michael Amadio fill in for bottom bottom of the lineup if they're injured. But I mean, it's not great depth. And Timothy Lilligren has got. He may not make it. Let's. We're we're getting to the point where Lilligren just may not make it. And Brandon, Brandon Manel, I'll tell you, if he has to play a lot, you're in trouble. And he may have to if there's injuries. So it could be it could be rough. It could be rough. If there's lots of injuries for Toronto, they could be in bad shape here. Uh, next, Vancouver Canucks. Oh, by the way, the community for uh, Toronto gave 51%. 51%. Coin flip for the Leafs to make the playoffs. Uh, Vancouver Canucks. Uh, there, I think there was a lot of recency bias in in what in the uh, percentages of them to make the playoffs this year. This year, this is a fairly easy division. They've got a lot of bottom feeders. Um, you can say what you want about the cap or whatever and how they picked up Larson and Connor Garland. Um, in that Connor Garland trade, but the team is better. Connor Garland was fantastic last year for Arizona. The question is, is his body going to hold up over the long haul? And there is a question there. It's kind of like a Ryan Ellis there. Injuries could be an issue for his size, but still a better team. And the top six on this team, there's nothing wrong with it. Garland, Horvat, Pearson, Miller, uh Peterson or Pedersen, whatever you want to say, and Brock Besser is great. I like Hoglander. I love the pickup of Jason Dickinson. 
I thought he was just buried in Dallas. But whenever I saw him on the ice, I thought that guy can play. And then, of course, we have the big fed killer, Vasily Podkolz and what he's going to become. Uh, most people just absolutely love, 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 love this kid. Is he ready at 20? We're about to find out if he is. That top nine is fantastic. As far as defense, it gets a little rough. Uh, Quinn Hughes, got to learn how to play defense, dude. I know he's a great offensive player, but got to learn how to play defense a little bit, man. Tyler Myers, same thing. Not great defensively. And Ekman Larson is great defensively or has been in the past, but the last two years has not been good. Um, Travis Hamanek, serviceable top four. And then you Levy and Tucker Poolman. Did you did they watch Winnipeg last year? Uh I watched Winnipeg last year and I did not think Tucker Pullman was very good. The guy can't skate. Uh not a great defense. All that being said, I still gave them 60% to make the playoffs because they're in a poor division and I think they can outscore their opponent. And I love Thatcher Demko. However, the community gave a little lower at 55%, almost a coin flip. And I think a lot of that has to do with the poor year last year. However, man, they had a terrible... Their their schedule for the first 21 games was absolutely disgusting. Then they had COVID, and they're a young team. Oh, my gosh. I, I think it's a throwaway year. I wouldn't put too much stock on last year. I think Vancouver could go either way. They could absolutely crush it with offense, or the defense could let them down and they could lose a lot of games. I think Thatcher Demko himself is going to keep it in. Now, if Demko gets hurt, they're in trouble because I don't think Halak has got it at 36 years old. As far as depth is concerned, if there's injuries, I like Zach McEwen. Uh, Nicholas Patan can fill in. Sheldon Drees, I don't know why he doesn't drive. I don't know why he doesn't get more of a chance in the NHL. His size, I suppose, but he plays well. He can play well in your bottom six. Um, not too bad. Justin Bailey, is he okay now? I don't know. Uh, but defense, Jack Rathbone should be ready this year. Brad Hunt, man, and then after that, it gets a little sour. Um, so could be problem with, with uh, injuries, but I think overall in that weak division, Vancouver makes it in. Vegas. We had a surprisingly low uh, pick at 70%. I think a lot of people are chapped because of what happened with Marc-Andre Fleury. In fact, talking to Vegas fans, they have been chapped about what happened to Marc-Andre Fleury. They think he got a raw deal. And I think a lot of teams think that that energy may permeate into this roster and affect them. I personally don't. When you've got great leaders like Stone and Pacioretty, um, there as far as Peter Angelo, they'll get them that team back going the right direction, I'm sure. Problem, of course, and it has been the problem with Vegas for quite some time, is the center position. And um, if they have injuries up the middle, things could get rough for them. Uh, but I think their defense and goaltending lane are still a good, a very good goaltender and and. Laurent Bossois did very well backing up Hollabuck in his time in Winnipeg. So I think they got enough here in a weak division to get in for sure. And everybody else did too. I had 87% and the community had 84% with a high of 90% and a low of 70%. The Washington Capitals. Um, it's uh, I have a hard time with this because Ovechkin, Baxter, Moshi is still a good line. I don't care that they're 35 to 34, still very good. The question marks are going to be with, can Mantha show can some consistency? Is Kuznetsov where he needs to be? They were, gonna, they were talking about trading him. They couldn't find a partner. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was just a scare tactic, but he's on his last legs, obviously. In Washington, Tom Wilson's a beast. The third line, there's a lot of scoring all through this lineup. Shiri, Eller, and Sprong, great five-on-five -five players, or Sprong has turned into one. Not a bad depth on forward. 
problem, of course, is I think with defense, one, two, Orloff's got to be better than he was last year. He's only 30 years old. He's not getting old yet, but he played like he was kind of maybe taking on too much. John Carlson is John Carlson. He's going to be your offensive guy. He, his, I believe his offense makes up for his weak, weaker defense. But be, after that, Kempney, Schultz, Van Beemsteig, and Jensen. I don't call that a good defense, boys and girls. I don't. Uh, and then Ilya Samsonov, who's only 24. It's the year for Samsonov to crush it because if they don't, I think, and uh, appears the community agrees here, this could be a rough year for Washington. It is a tough division uh, with a, with Carolina, um, Philadelphia getting better, New Jersey getting better, New York Rangers getting better. Pittsburgh's always a problem. New York Islanders are there. I mean, this is a tough division. And that defense, to me, too many question marks. I had... What did I have for them? I had 45% and there was a 35%. The average from the community was a coin flip, 50-50, that Washington's going to make the playoffs this year. We haven't heard that for a while. And if Ilya Samsonov can't get over the injury bug and gets hurt, forget about it. I think it's over because I'm not a big fan of it. Vanacek, I don't think he's as... uh, He's definitely not what you want for a number one goaltender. Finally, the Winnipeg Jets. And, oops, step chart. Winnipeg Jets. And we were all over the place with the Winnipeg Jets. There was as high as 95% in the community. Uh, You can, again, this is all on my live stream. You can go check it out. Um, Go check out my subscribe to this channel and you can check out the live stream. Uh, We do this all the time. 96% actually. And as low as 57%. I had 63% chance for them to make the playoffs. I just think uh, Hollabuck will manage to get them in somewhere. They have had an improved. De- they are, they do have an improved defense with Brandon Dillon, and uh, maybe Nate Schmidt. I'm a little concerned about Nate Schmidt. I mean, he has struggled, but Paul Maurice seems to get a lot out of his defense. Um, now I've heard okay, they were outshot last year. Yeah, they were about halfway. About they were about middle of the league in shots compared to shots for to shots against. But the defense they had last year should have been a lot worse than that. Hollebuck did keep them in. Hollebuck is fantastic. Their top, their top forwards are great. I really, I think Vas, Vaseline better be ready this year because he's taking some big shoes. Appleton was fantastic last year. And I think that's going to hurt. But I think the top six, as long as Dubois gets his head out of his butt, gets going here. After the big move, uh, he looked uninspired. It's time to be inspired, dude. Time. You got your trade. You got moved over to Winnipeg now. Better crush it. Better crush it. We have 74% chance of Winnipeg making the playoffs. Like I said, I had 63% chance that they make the playoffs. Winnipeg fans, tell me what you think about your team making the the playoffs this year. That's my full 42. Thank you for listening in, boys and girls. We'll have plenty of more. And uh, go hit the subscribe button. Get yourself to the live stream. It is so much frolic. You'll enjoy it. I know you will. Okay, bye.